about financially and we know you need to go to school so therefore we bring the information to you right in your living room george can you tell us about fafsa fafsa um basically is an is an online application um fafsa is the base is is the mecca for um getting the application done starting the whole process the nucleus if you may to um, get the FAFSA done, you go to www.f as in Frank, A as in Apple, F as in Frank, S A dot gov. Again, www.fafsa dot gov. It's an online application that you complete um, that students, before you can even get any scholarship, before you can get any student loans, before you can get any sources of, of, of funding for work study even, you have to complete the FAFSA application, and you must have to also incorporate in the FAFSA application, because I believe you have up to four to five schools that six, you can- Six schools. Six schools now, that you can um, put in to um, state, basically, where you want your funding to be um, sent. But in essence, you have six schools as options, but only one school can get funding for you. So that's where you basically do the FAFSA application online. That's the application for you to apply in order for you to receive funds to pay for your tuition. Mm -hmm. Okay, on the FAFSA application, a lot of people, they will say, I don't want to go online to complete the application. Can you make the difference? Can you tell us the difference between a paper application and an online application? Well, it's, 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 Obvious, the paper you're going to do manually, the <laughs> online you're going to do online. However, we don't take applications through paper. There's no manual application. But what we do have, if students come to the actual campus or go to the actual school they will be attending, we have an actual um, um, formatted um, paper application that they can actually fill out. And then they can go to the FAFSA website, www.fafsa.gov, and complete all the information um, on the FAFSA website. Are so you talking about the worksheet? They have a worksheet. Mm -hmm. okay. There's an application. It's a manual worksheet that students can actually fill out, and then they can go back and on, or they can go to the FAFSA website and insert the information there. But the application now is uh, very user friendly. Okay. You know. Mm -hmm. How many steps do you have? Do you do you have uh, because I know on the application you have step one, step two. And can you elaborate on some of the steps for us? Because okay. this is these are very important information. Well, the first step that we have at Broward College, first step we do, we have is we, we, we make students apply for their PIN. Um, students should have a PIN as early as high school. As I mentioned, it is very important for students to apply through www.pin.ed.gov. Again, www.pin.ed.gov where they can apply for the PIN because you need a PIN if you're a student and you're a dependent student, you need a PIN for yourself and you also have to go to the PIN website to apply for a PIN for a parent as well. You can only use one parent of course so that's fine. And you basically need that PIN so when it's time for you to do the application which is step one using the FAFSA website you complete the application. After five business days, three to five business days, you, you, you check with your local school. Every school is different. But at Broward College, what we do, we um, have the information available on the student website, the Broward College website, www.broward.edu, where students can actually go in and go through the process of logging in their information. Because whatever school you decide to attend, the school can't download your application if you're not a student there. So of course, by that time, you would have had already made up your mind which institution you will be attending. Okay. you. Um how the school is going to download the information. Is there a code there? Yes, there's a school. Like, if you're attending Broward College, they, um, our school code is 001500. But on the application, you can actually look up the schools and they'll provide you the school code. They give you that option on the select option in terms of what school you want to have your application. You can download the school that you will be attending. And you go to your admissions departments and go through the process of registering to the school so that way by the time you know your financial applic aid application needs to be downloaded you are already a, a current student at the school and we can download your information. 
Okay. Um, if I want to, right now I'm living in the state of Florida, and then I want to move to another state, is, uh, can I use the same application? You can use the same application, but you have to change the school code to whatever school you'll be attending. And students who do that have to be mindful because when you move from one state to another state, there are out of fee um, costs, out of state costs, because they go by your, 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 your proof of residency. If you were not a resident in that current state for at least a year, um, there's a likely chance that you'd have to pay that out of state fee, which is about three times the amount um, per credit hour that um, you'd have to pay. And usually students who are in this case scenario have to be mindful that they have to either pay out of pocket the difference or do the application early enough where they can get their loan process cleared for them to have the Pell and the loan available to help fund their education. What type of information that a student needs in order for the student to complete the application? Well, essentially what you basically need are your tax returns from the year. Like currently now we're in the 2010-11 school year. So you would need your 2009 taxes. You would just need to um, have the school code, knowledge of the school code, whichever school you will be attending. So you have to know a school you will be definitely attending. Exactly. And when you do the application, it's so user friendly now. When you um, go to the portion of the tax portion, that's the most scariest part of the application. Mm -hmm. Students are afraid to provide their, 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 their financial information or their financial status. They're, they're afraid of security purpose. Um, it's so user friendly now, you know, and it's so, so um, confidential no one could use your information because of your PIN. That's the, the, that's the essence of the PIN as well. In addition to that, it's so user-friendly. When you put the icon on each question that it asks about your tax information, there's a little box that will populate on the lower right-hand corner called Help and Hint. It will tell you where on the tax return that you're using to look to answer each question. I think now FAFSA can match your tax return for you while you're doing the application. Mm -hmm. There's a question there it, they will ask you if you want them to match your tax return. They do. Okay. And um, there's another issue with the FAFSA. If I make a mistake on my application, can I go back and correct it? Now, here's the thing. Um, if you made a mistake on your application, FAFSA does give you that option because there's a box one and there's a box two where's the, app, where's the box for application and there's a box three. Box three gives the students the option to make corrections. However, it is important that you have your information written like your PIN, you must know your PIN. If it's a, if it's a four digit number that you're going to choose, make it a four digit number that you can remember. You can always go back and make the correction on your FAFSA. Also with the FAFSA, in addition to that, the institution that you're attending also may require you for verification. Okay, we're going to take a short break. Okay. We will be right back. You're watching Serious Stuff.